Welcome to today's tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be discussing Splice and all the features and functions within it. Go into Splice when you're ready to start doing all the major editing and fine tuning. First thing you'll see is the projects list window. All your projects will be listed here. In my case, I have a sample that I put in there. If you slide it to the left, it'll bring up a delete. Nothing happens if you slide it to the right. So you hit the little delete button if you want to get rid of it, and let's get rid of it. When you first open up Splice before you've ever used it, you'll see this window says no projects yet. Start a new project. At the bottom it says learn more about Splice. I'll allow you guys to open that up and read all you want on that one. In the upper right hand corner there's a little plus symbol. That'll start the new project. This little question mark is also a helps list. And on the left it says a little tiny gear symbol. So let's press that and take a look at what's there. It says settings. This is currently version 3.5.3, as you can see right here. And from left to right, it's on the left it's a column of things you can select to read. On the right, just an arrow saying to open it. It goes help, connected accounts, rate on the App Store, follow at Splice underscore app on Instagram, follow at Splice underscore app on Twitter, send feedback splice ios settings and legal and if you click splice ios settings it actually opens up the ipads settings so i'm not even going to bother going into that we're going to hit done the next one again you hit the little help button and this will give you a list of basic questions how do i use the projects list screen why does preparing your project sometimes take a while what does photo motion Ken Burns control? How do I manage the settings for my project? Well, we're going to go through all those features anyway. And then the bottom here, it says contact support. So if you have extra questions that either I can't answer or you don't find within these lists, you can question the maker directly. So let's go back. You can also search. There's a little magnifying lens here. You can type in whatever search you're looking for. So let's go back all the way out. I believe if you press this, you'll start a new project also. Uh, okay, so what it'll do is it'll bring up your entire gallery that your phone has. However, it brings the videos up in reverse order. So be aware of that. When it comes up, your video usually on the bottom is now on the top. And in our case, we're gonna select this clip. So let's just add that one. And you'll see here that you can then pick music. Wait a second. Let's go back. Let's start again, oops. I want to, so there's no back button on that screen, so let's just close it and reopen it. Again, there's no project at the plus sign. It opens up your gallery. Now, there's a little down arrow here I meant, forgot to mention. If you click on this, it allows you to then search through your other files where you might have photos and videos that you're looking at. So if you got, let's see, does it show? Well, those right here, these different apps that you can go through. In my case, it shows all my folders for the gallery. I do have an Instagram account, but it's not set up yet. I haven't really used it, so I can't really demonstrate that. Of course, whatever's on Facebook, I'm not sure what the stock is, but of course, there's that. Dropbox, Go, GoPro, Pro, GoPro Plus, which I do not have an account with. I'll have to look into them, and anything else. Okay, so you can change your gallery, but we're going to pick this video and hit add. Whoa, why does it say add two? What's the second one that's selected? Okay, well, we'll find out. So then on the next screen, it gives you the choice of music. There's two tabs. The one on the right says iTunes. I don't have anything on iTunes anyway, so we're not going to go there. Okay, but you can pick any of these categories. Once you've selected your category, um, then you'll have a list of different songs that are available within the app. You can either tap the text of the song and it'll just upload it, or you can hit this little play button to preview what it sounds like. Now, of 
course, it does pop up a little message saying the music is subject to GoPro terms and blah, 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 you know, legal. You're allowed to use it according to the legal section within the app. However, if you're going to post on YouTube, they re recommend that you get permission from the people that made the music that's in the app before you do that. If you're not intending on doing any sort of you know, money making, if you're not trying to make a profit doing this, you should be okay. Non-profit videos, you'll just have to contend with anybody who has music on your video applying a copyright claim to your video. So that's, that's something you'll have to consider. I, now at the top of the next page, after you've selected your music, uh, it says the project settings. At the first line you got your project name, which if you tap it, it should open up so that I can type in what... Did my pen turn off? Nope, didn't. Okay, so we can change the name here. Now let's call this Splice Tutorial. Yeah, honestly, I'm not sure if I'm spelling that right. Okay, so Splice Tutorial will be the title of this video. I want the format to be in landscape. I'm filming everything in landscape, so the format should be in landscape. If I have it in portrait, then the screen will have to be vertical, right? Which gives me black bars on the side and I don't want that. So we're gonna stick with landscape. Then of course it gives you a background color. If you select this, uh, it gives you, come on, let's do that again. It gives you a range of colors to choose from. Now you can't manually go through a little glider and change the color and make it custom. You're kind of just stuck with these, which isn't too bad. I'm gonna leave it in black. Then down here you have the default transitions. Each of these transitions, um, well, I was going to show them later on, but I can show them right now. So the first transition is none, and I actually like that to be my default. Let's go back. I like the none to be my default, so I'm going to leave that right there. There's swipe down, crossfade, swipe across, fade to black, and blur. Now those transitions occur between scenes. So when you're going from one scene to another, that's when you want to use those. The next one is transition duration. This option is how long you want your transition to take. Now be aware of this because however long the transition is, that's how much of your video it's gonna actually overlap. So if you stop your clip right at the end of you saying something, your transition, if it's through two or three seconds, it's gonna take one and a half seconds to start the transition from the end of that clip. So it'll start as you're talking. So be aware of that. Whenever you make a clip, always include a little extra video to have your transition occur on, whether it's walking away, turning to clean up, it doesn't matter what it is. Just give yourself a little, a few frames of time to have that bit of transition occur. If you don't, you need to make this number really low. If you have a lot of time, you can just make it really big, which is three seconds. I'm gonna set it down to a second. Then we have our photo duration option. In this option, it gives a single photo, which does not animate, a certain amount of time between 10 and one second. Okay, I'm gonna set this one to three seconds. Okay. Now, if I put a picture up on the screen, it'll stay there for three seconds before going to the next clip. And then, of course, there's this outro. I'm going to leave it on for the sake of this video because, of course, this is Splice. And I'll explain more about the outros when we get to that. And then there's Photo Motion Ken Burns. I, me personally, prefer to turn that off. But I'll explain more of that once we get further into the application. So then you hit Done and it imports your video. Depending on how many videos you've imported, that process could actually take a really, really long time. Now, I've only got here a three second clip that I must have gotten from that other app, and then my video, which is nine seconds. Of course, we're gonna continually import videos. So, I didn't really want this clip, so I can tap it, and it gives me three options. It gives me edit photo, duplicate, or delete. Now, of course, duplicate does exactly what it says. It creates a copy. 
and then delete does exactly the same, removes it. Okay. I can also edit the photo. Editing the fiddle brings up a sample page here. This is your preview of the image you're looking at. It gives you four buttons on the bottom. Each in turn is effects, duration, text, photo motion, Ken Burns. Okay. On the upper right hand corner, you have the little help icon. That will always be the same help icon throughout the entire app. So the previous window that you saw with help is that same window. This little arrow on the left is your back button in case you want to exit out of your project. This here play button, when you press it, will start the play of your video for only the photo that you're in. And as you saw, I have my photos set to play for three seconds. If I'd like to change that, I can go to this little time button and I can change the time here so that I can have an individual photo have its own time sequence. This slider allows me to move the play icon to that point within that video or photo. This little button here, it's a, I would want to say like a magic wand, but it gives you filters that you can place over your video and see real time as it will look up on the screen. Whether it changes as you're playing, I don't know. Let's find out. So press play, come on, and then will it change? Nope, it pauses as soon as you change. So it won't play real time, but you can see what it will look like as you select it. And these are all the options. Warming, blue, NAR, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, fade, process, SEPA, and instant. We'll leave it to none. Right here we have text. In this text, you can choose the type of font and see it appear real time on the screen. What is that, Evanier next? Not sure if I'm saying that right. Automatic Bold, American Typewriter, Bangers, Black Ops 1, Blackout Midnight, Blackout 2 AM, Chalkboard, Coming Soon, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. What is that, Corget, whatever? Creepster, Gothic Neo, Hofler Text? something. I don't know what that is. Okay, this is New Wave. This is Lobster. Ostrich Sands Bold. Press Start. Pussab. <laughs> Railway and Wild Pitch. Okay, so those are your options for which you can choose. You also have the option to choose what color you would like that text to appear. Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, this is a really bad picture for text. So you can also grab the text and make it. Oh wait, I didn't. I didn't type any text. Let's actually put something there. Let's see, this is text. Okay, so you hit done. And then you can grab the text that you've put there and make it bigger. There's a line that appears on the screen to help you center the object. You can twist it and place it. The thing about text is when you put it on the screen, it will be there for the entire clip that you put up. So this three second image will have that text on it the whole time. If I wanted to have it only in a piece of it, I would have to cut the video so that it only plays where I want it. Other than that, it does not animate Nothing special here for that. And that's the text. Now this button here is the photo burns thing. As I have set it off, I can turn it back on right here and it gives me two versions of the same clip. If it's a movie clip instead of a photo, the first frame will be shown here and the last frame will be shown here. Here, it allows me to take the first frame of my, wait, is the text? What the heck? What? That's not working right. Okay, you know what? Let's get rid of this text because it's just interfering with what I'm trying to do. Done. Okay, so let's go to this. I should be able to actually grab the picture. Why is it not letting me do it? That's weird. I can do it on 
it even says right there, zoom, pinch, or drag to set the start point. Okay, well, why can't I? It's not letting me do it. Oh, no. Messing up my video. I have to cut that out. <laughs> so, you're supposed to be able to. It's not working here. Oh, wait a minute. All right, I'm going to have to film me doing that on my phone then. <laughs> so let's delete this clip. And get rid of that one. And here's our intro. But wait a minute, that music is too loud. So let's fix that. I have here on the audio tab, there is a slider that allows me to pick exactly where in my video I want to see, right? This music is obviously way longer than our video. And I have my outro. The outro, I'll just tell you right now, is the splice one. If you leave it on, it gives you a splice outro, which in this case will actually print the word splice. And then the video stops. So it looks like this, which you can't hear anything. And as you can see, that, that outro for splice actually covers part of my video. So in the video, I'm talking. And I'm trying to get my message across. But one, the volume's too loud for the music, so you can't hear me talking. And two, it's putting the outro right over me talking. So that's not good. Those are the kind of things you have to be aware of. And in my case, I tend to turn that off. So let's go, and right here it says outro on. I'm going to... Wait a minute, it says edit. Editing. There's four different ones you can choose. This one, it turns the picture black and white. It turns the picture black and white as it plays. This one is the one you originally saw, which it stays in full color. This one turns the picture black. And this one does too, but displays the out GoPro separately a different way. Now, I'm going to disable it because there's an option here to turn it off. That way, when my video plays through, the clip ends where I want it to. We still have the problem of the volume with this music. So you go into your music clip by tapping it. Grab this slider for the volume control, and you can turn it down real low. You have a fade in and a fade out option. Those are actually really good to use to help the music gently enter your video. Otherwise, it's like getting punched in the eardrums, especially if you're wearing earplugs. At the top here, where you have your actual sound for the music, you have sliders on the end that allows you to choose how long you want that clip to be. Now, I know that the intro is only a few seconds, so you can say, let's just pick... Just pick maybe like nine seconds or so. That's only seven. Eight, nine. As you see, it zooms in if you press and hold. And of course, it zooms back out. So let's go and play that. That sounds so different from what it was at the very beginning. Not too many people are going to recognize it right away, so let's just go with that. And I'm sorry, I'm bumping my camera. Okay, let's see. So we move the slider back and take a look. So that's the whole thing. So guess what? Now you have a little bit of sound. But I don't like where it's at. So let's fix that. One more thing about this slider here in the corner is that if you scroll up on the iPad, which I failed to do in this video, you'll see a red dot. This red dot is a timer that counts down from 3 to 1 and starts recording. That's how you do a voiceover as you're hearing right now. Alright, so in order to adjust in the way I want to do it, I'm going to go to the video clip section. Now, on this video screen, 
there is a little icon right here uh, over here in the corner that if you press it it goes full screen at the same time pressing it pressing that button also um, plays the video but it goes full screen that's the same for the iPhone app as well so if you press it again it goes back out again at the bottom there's a slider for the time along the entire video including the outro but then there's this little tiny square between the two clips if I tap that what the heck oh it's grayed out my bad I need to add another video so let's hit this little plus symbol off on the side and it brings up another pop-up. It says photos and videos at the top or title on the bottom. If you hit title, it'll give you a blank picture that you can add text to. I'm going to select photos and videos. i got to press hard with this stylus. Okay, so let's input... Looks like I'm missing one. What is it, this one? And put that one. It's a problem with mine is all the clips are black and white. Ooh, I don't know which ones. Well, I'm gonna have to check. So one of these are my intro. One of these are my outro. Oh, and let's input this one. Okay. So it'll import all of those. It says, please don't close, splice, or lock your device. It's very important that you do not turn off your phone, your tablet, or lock your device for any reason, or even exit the app by hitting the home button while it's doing this, or it will cancel the operation entirely. And you'll go back to your app and nothing will have changed. You won't have a file full of more clips. So don't do anything to your device while it's doing this. So however long this takes, you just have to wait it out. It takes a really long time to upload those videos. So if you really want to get a, an idea for how long it really took, take a look at the clock here up top because I stopped recording the video when I started doing the download because it usually takes a while. And mind you, it did give me an error. So it didn't in upload anything. It turns out that that nine second clip has a problem and it can't in upload that one. So I had to go through and upload them individually. There's a 20 minute clip. There's a 6 second clip and a 16 second clip. Now these clips are previously made clips that I put together in Splice to have that I could just import. So it's like, this is my outro, this is my intro. Now they're obviously in the wrong order. So in order to fix that, you can... Ugh, my stylus turned off. See, it took so long that even my stylus turned off. Just turns back on. Okay, so you can you can grab the clips and slide them left and right to see all your clips. But, like I said, they're in the wrong order. So in order to fix that, this clip, I want to move it. You press and hold, and then you slide it until they all move. It'll make a copy of itself in that space. When you let go, it sits there. I know that this 6 second one is my intro, and this 16 second one is my outro. So we're going to put this at the very back. Okay, so that should be my whole video. And then this slider here will allow me to see all the video. It doesn't play very quick as I drag but you can see the video all right so those are the video clips that we imported and then of course my outro now my outro in the video clip let's go to it in the video clip come on I already have music in the pre-made file so if I play this clip there's already sound My device is not picking up my stylus. See, I already have sound there. Okay. So I don't have to add more audio, although I can. I can put another layer of audio on top of that. So the, FYI, this one has audio in it already. This one does not have audio. That way I can change my intro music, which is what we did here. Uh, so now i got to go to the very beginning and move my slider so this little bit here is the intro the 
music that I just paste there will play into my clip. But I don't want any music playing into the video part. So I can go to this slider and determine, I know that the video is six seconds. So I can only have six seconds of audio in this file. So let's bring this down. Let's see, three, so it should be nine. So 19, so that should be six seconds of audio. That means that the slider line should line up almost perfectly. But it looks like I can make it seven seconds. There appears to be a little bit of black there. So let's make this just a little bit longer. Okay, I'll go back, check that. So it will go into the video just a little bit, but I'm not talking there, so it should be fine. Also, I have the audio file fading out, so that should help. Now, if there's any popping and clicking in between my scenes, the music in the bottom there might help hide it. It doesn't in all videos, and I do have other videos where you can hear the clicking. So let's see, how does that look? Hey, what? Okay, well, I guess Splice does have other issues too, and it can force close. So I guess there's another issue with Splice. But did it save the last thing I did? Let's find out. Welcome to today's tutorial. In this tutorial... Alright, so... The next thing we need to do is the outro portion. So, I'm going to add another clip. Oops. We already talked about this. These are the transitions. Yeah, in order to get to them, you got to click that little box between the clips. And on the bottom of the window, you can adjust the time of that transition. We have it set to one sec, and it's using the default transition, which is none. I'm not going to change this right now. But I'm going to add a video clip here. And the video clip I'm going to add is, there it is, okay, so I'm going to import this one. Now let's say, let's say you have a video clip where something's happening where you don't want the audio of the clip to come through. Let's say somebody says something that they really shouldn't have, have said and you want to just mute that out. Well, you do have the option to do that. Down here on the bottom of the video clip when you open the video to edit it, you have a whole lot more features. You have the ability to cut, which means if you grab this slider, ugh, yeah, that's one of the other issues that I've encountered with this program. And when you try and grab that left slider, it exits like you're trying to back out, and that's not what I'm trying to do at all. I was hoping that using the stylus would make it easier to grab, but you can grab the slider here to adjust your clip. I don't need to do that with this video clip, so I'm not going to trim it. I'm just going to show you an example. Now I can grab this slider and do the same thing. Bring it in and just, okay, I want my clip to be shorter. Now if I, it's on trim, and if I hit trim, I mean, uh, if I hit apply trim, it should ask me, do you want to do it? It selected, uh, it says this will permanently trim the selected video in the project. I'm going to hit cancel because of course I don't want to do that. Then you have a tab over here that says cut. That one will cut out the piece in the middle. So you could either cut out the portion of the person actually saying it or not. Now I'm not going to do that either. So... Let's say I did do that. Let's say in my demonstration here, I accidentally hit cut and screwed it up. This little circle arrow right here, right in this corner here, is the undo button. What that button will do is refresh the entire video. So let's say you had a whole lot of little clips in the thing and you chopped it up to put a bunch of different texts that popped in and out and you, you chopped it up so much to do different transitions and. Now you need to import that video again. That button will import the entire thing. So then you'll have to go back into it and find that little piece that you wanted 
to replace and cut it in. So be aware of that. If the video you import has been chopped up a lot, save it as a section to import only that little piece. Otherwise, you just totally ruined your whole project and it's going to be really hard to find that frame to line it up. The only option then would be to just pick an obvious change and just put a transition fade there. Um, down here on the uh, next to it, you also have, just like in the photo uh, editor, different, the very same filters that you can put over the picture. And then here is a speed of the video. So you can slow it down to 0.2 of the speed of the original. So now it's a 36 second video. And it's like slow motion. Okay. Or you can speed it up and make it twice as fast. But I'm not going to play that. Because this is also the outro. And it does have the same text that you can enter. Again, it doesn't animate and you can change the color of the text as well. But I'm not going to do that either. This is the photo burns motion thing where I'm supposed to be able to grab one of the frames and, <laughs> and move it. Yeah, but how do I grab it to move it back? Oh, crap. Okay, wait. If I turn it on. <laughs> There you go. Okay. So yeah, you're supposed to be able to move it. I guess you gotta press and hold till it fades before it moves. Okay, that's how you do it. Oh, Alright, cool. So then you can pinch that out. See, that's how you do it. Alright, so let's say I wanted the video to zoom in as I was talking. I could have that happen. But I'm not gonna do that because that's my video. It's fine the way it is. So... I'm going to turn this down. This is the volume. You can mute it out so that you can't hear anything. Oh, come on, man. Why is this not picking up my finger? I mean, there we go. See, so then you can totally mute out the audio. I'll just leave that. Now, I want to add music. Oh, no, wait, no, no. I already have music in this one. I don't need to add music to that one. Uh, you know what? I didn't... I didn't put that volume back up. I was just trying to demonstrate that. Whoa. Oh, and if you don't, let's say you don't apply this trim, but I already have the markers moved. What'll happen if I, even if I don't apply it, as I'm playing the video, this whole piece will get cut out. So you want to make sure you go back to where you want it to be, because if you don't do that, those gray areas will not be included in your video when you play it, or if you output it. Let's say I save it even though the sliders are moved, but I intended the whole thing to be there, um, it'll still save it with the piece that's gray not being in the video. So be aware of that. Make sure that you have your sliders all the way out if you want to include the whole thing. And I can change the volume back up. Okay. Okay, so now let's, let's add some video clips in here, make the video a little longer. <clears throat> You know what? I haven't shown you guys this little square in the middle. If you tap the square, it brings up your transitions. And that's where the transition is applied between clips. And of course, we spoke about this a little while earlier, so let's go back. Let's add some more video clips. In order to do that, just bring up the little plus like we did before. I'm going to put some clips here. And I'm going to add... It's got the stuff mixed all weird. I think it's this one, and this one, and this one. <clears throat> okay, so that took a little while. Let's see, where did it put? Okay, so this is the one. Hmm. I'm going to have to check the order of that. So then the next thing, of course, you check the order of your videos and see if it's in the right order. And once you've done all your editing, your clips, and your audio, your transitions, your sound files, and all sorts of other mess, whatever else you're going to do in here, then there's a little button up here in the upper right-hand corner. It's a little box with an up arrow. You're going to press that. Oh, no! 
Okay, well, if you have no storage on your device, you'll get this message. It says, not enough storage. There's not enough storage on this device to complete your request. Please remove some videos, photos, songs, or apps from your device. Tap help to learn more about managing your storage. Well, I guess this is something I have to go do right now. Okay, so let's try it again. We're going to press the little box. Okay, and then it brings up a share link or share video. <clears throat> of course, there's this little X right here that will close and back you out. There's under share link, copy link. I've never used that. Messages, which I've, again, never used. Mail, that's email, of course. Again, I never use that. I have no reason to use that. Uh, and then there's share video with either YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram. Again, I don't use these, but you can have them available to you. I mean, obviously. Let's press this more button. Nothing's happening. Okay. In more, you can... Like, I can share it to the very device that's filming it. It says Michael iPhone. Or any of these other programs in the bottom here. I can also save the video. Then it gives me a list of outputs. <clears throat> now this is where this program meets its final limitation. As you can see, the lowest is medium, which is 320p, or large, which is 540p, and then HD 720p. I always output my videos in HD 1080p. My phone can film in 4K. So that's an issue here if I can't output in 4K. But it's okay, I don't have a 4K screen, so I'm outputting in 1080p. And then I go to the out exporting video, and this is gonna export the entire video. Here we have our final scene, which leads into our outro. Hey, let's check it out. All right, those are all the features and functions within Splice. I'll leave it up to you to decide how you wanna combine the two to get different effects within your video. And you can come up with some pretty creative videos. If this information was useful, Hit that like button. If you haven't done so yet, press the subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next video. Shout out to my viewers who've made these comment milestones.